Um, so I'm uh, here to, um, uh, together with uh, Babak, who is actually as well on the road, uh, and um, Andrew. Uh, we are the people behind uh, Walkless in Create. Uh, and we uh, took this initiative of a walk listening cafe, uh, which invites um, um, a guest uh, the, for tonight, this is Suazik Wisenik, uh, to initiate a conversation, which is meant to be a horizontal conversation. It's not meant as a lecture, but as an, as an invitation to share uh, your practices, your ideas, um, um, your experiences with each other and with Suazik and with us. Um, it's a cafe, so it's very open. You can come in and leave whenever you want and I will be your um, bartender for tonight although it will be unfortunately uh, on the virtual uh, way. Uh, we, um, um, the Suazik, um, as we are going to five past, I'll, I'll start, is an, um, is an artist and an, a creative traveler um, that uh, has a background in uh, going around the world um, and lived in India and in Germany, uh, comes from France, uh, traveled to Africa um, with the public transport and then actually over, and traveled over 40,000 kilometers as I understood uh, well. And is um, next to being an artist working with landscape um, uh, and the relation between environment and humans, um, as well, the founder of, of, of among others, uh, the Happy Tourists uh, Agency, which invites you to get lost in your own city, uh, to actually, ironically, to get to know it even better. Uh, so um, for now, I'll just leave uh, Suazik um, tell something about her activities, and then uh, we'll start a conversation. So Suazik. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Gerd. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Andrew, Babak, and Gerd for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have actually prepared a small presentation to to introduce you to a Happy Tourist, and then uh, after that we can all discuss if it's okay for you. So I'm going to share my uh, screen. And here it is. Can you can you see it correctly? Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, quickly as uh, Gert uh, very nicely said, uh, my name is Swazi Kizenek. I am French. Uh, I was born in Switzerland. I live now in Germany after living six years in India in Mumbai. Uh, I create multimedia art pieces, uh, mostly to uh, question the relationship between human beings and their environment. Um, as Gert said, again, this led me to uh, travel quite a lot. Uh, I've uh, uh, to explore the planet from the Amazonian forest to uh, Africa to Himalaya always in the attempt to find different, um, to, to, to study different culture and see how people relate to their environment in their different cultures. Um, so this also uh, led me to become, as you can see at the end, a CEO, at least on my business cards. When I was in India, I realized it was much more uh, efficient to be a CEO on a business card than to be an artist. But uh, I actually became a CEO when I created this uh, brand Happy uh, by creating first uh, Happy Owners, not Happy Tourists, but Happy Owners. And Happy Owners um, is uh, what I call a surreal estate agency, uh, which designs alternative futures for cities and uh, advertise them by hacking the real estate industry. And um, so in 2000, 16, I think I came to Berlin and there I created after happy owners I created sorry I created happy tourist happy tourist is the first and unique travel agency inviting people to get lost um, it's an artistic project uh, but with a serious objective to raise awareness on how uh, mass tourism 
uh, impact uh, cities and the environment and uh, with the ambition to um, to invent new ways to be or not to be a tourist. So what is a happy tourist? Uh, is it a tourist or is it not a tourist? Uh, here on the photos, you can see uh, some typical tourists, which I've borrowed to Martin Parr, who you might know. He's a famous photographer who photographed tourists all over the world. Uh, so to answer this question, tourist or not tourist, uh, I would like to make a comparative study of both normal tourist versus happy tourists. Uh, there is no universal definition of tourism. Here there are a few definitions which I found on the internet. According to the Britannica Dictionary, a tourist is a person who spends time away from home in pursuit of recreation, relaxation and pleasure. Uh, it's interesting to note that the uh, World Trade Organization and the OECD um, also established that business, visiting friends or relatives, health and religion also are purposes of visit which qualified as tourism. So basically, as soon as we travel and we spend time away from home, we are tourists. Even us artists, uh, when we go for residency, exhibitions, we are all tourists. But the question is, are we happy tourists? So, uh, common tourists usually follow the beaten path. They move in packs and according to pre-established circuits from attraction to attraction. Happy tourists, however, can be find, found in the verge of the cities where nobody is going because there is nothing to see. They enjoy drifting alone in the unknown, prefer the margins to the overcrowded attractions. Tourists make use, normal tourists, make use of all the established system of provision in order to stay safe and make sure they don't miss anything. They follow recommendations, they follow the maps, they follow some apps, they follow the trends, they follow guides. And as uh, pleasure seekers, they are generally insulated from difficulty, danger and embarrassment. Happy tourists, however, create their own journeys and are not afraid to look ridiculous, as you can see. They are more explorers than tourists, they accept to take risks, they um, reconcile themselves with a uh, creative spirit and a childish uh, mindset. They follow their instincts, they know the wind, some invisible clue or sometimes just a dog, which can lead them to situations which might be awkward but always memorable. <coughs> Tourists are destination consumers, just like uh, travel agencies are destination managers. And as most consumers in a capitalist system, they want the most for their money. Therefore, they plan in advance. They make sure to see all the um, most popular attraction in as little time as possible. Happy tourists, however, approach is the, each destination as unknown territory. Uh, still to be discovered. They agree in advance that it is possible that nothing will happen, that they will miss the main attractions and that the guide won't deliver any information. They don't plan and have no preconceived expectation, therefore they can't be disappointed. Normal tourists love exotic destinations and uh, which they mostly believe are on the other side of the planet. Happy tourists, however, have the power to find exoticism at their doorsteps. The extraordinary in the ordinary and the beauty in the parking lot of uh, IKEA. According to the tourism teacher, people associate tourists with a series of activities such as uh, lying on the beach, drinking cocktails, beer, alcohol, visiting major tourist attractions, following a guided tour, packing a suitcase, flying on an airplane, getting a suntan, so happy tourists can definitely be found doing those kind of activities, but uh, they will you will mostly see them uh, climb the stairway to heaven, walk on the water, chase the horizon, create a revolution, play hide and, hide and seek in a department store, or collect special clouds, just like those two girls who, who walked for more than one hour carrying those vanilla ice cream pretending that they were uh, walking clouds in the sky of Berlin. And finally, tourism can lead to uh, situations of conflicts. It's 
quite often now you see this kind of signs in uh, European capitals. And although tourism brings many benefits to the host countries, uh, it can also cause much damage by challenging existing values, social norms, traditions and behavior, by causing damage to the local environment, by having an impact on the real estate rental market, owners preferring to uh, rent to tourists than to locals, the rental prices are increasing, and the number of homes available for long-term rental is decreasing. This results in conflicts between tourists and locals, but also between locals and politicians. And as we will see later, happy tourists try to offer a series of solutions which might have the key to solve this issue of mass tourism. So I see you ask yourself, are you a tourist or are you a happy tourist? And how do we become happy tourists? Um, well, we at Happy Tourist have the solution to, gu to guide you towards happiness. Thanks to a series of experience which uh, will transform the way you travel. Our methods bring serendipity, chaos and disorder into tourism. We make use of artistic practice and to encourage a sensitive vision um, and rehabilitate serendipity into tourism. We have identified three types of happy tourism. The first one is recycled tourism. The second one is getting lost. And the third one is stay home. Recycled tourism is something I started uh, with my son a few years ago. I was, we were traveling together in uh, Firenze and uh, I was back in Firenze after maybe 15 years and I was quite uh, shocked by the changes the city had uh, suffered. Uh, I had the feeling it became an entertainment park uh, for, for, for tourists. So after a few days visiting um, everything the guidebook advised me to visit, I told my son that I didn't want to use the guidebook any anymore. And I asked him instead to choose a group of tourists that we would follow for the whole day. And this is how we started this new uh, activity that we now call Recycle. Recycle your own tourists and follow it. it basically consist in uh, stalking a group of tourists without being seen, which can be very fun when you do this with a teenager, but also very, um, uh, which sometimes leads you to a very awkward situation. We were following this group of American girl who took us in a department store to go shopping for underwear, actually, and you can imagine my teenage son uh, hiding behind the, the, the clothes, uh, very discreet. But now he's asking for it again, and he became very knowledgeable about how to choose the right tourist to go in the place he wants to go. So getting lost, uh, this is one other activity that uh, main actually activity of happy tourists. This is getting lost. Getting lost is really not as easy as you think. Uh, we are now always uh, with all the accessories and all the tools we have on our phone to it's actually very difficult to not know where we are and it sounds like uh, uh, very ironic actually that we are developing tools to get lost to escape the tools which tell us where we are um, and the third one is stay home uh, which this category is still under development and very popular during uh, the pandemics and we definitely don't have the exclusivity on this activity. So for each category we have developed uh, creative impulses which uh, set tourists in motion without giving them destination. Uh, we offer frameworks which uh, distract tourists from attraction and uh, encourage them to drift uh, in between the attractions. We subvert the language of the tourism industry, so it's always a kind of uh, hacking the tourist industry, to guide people in a very abstract way which encourages them to, um, to use their creative uh, mind. So how do we uh, deliver those uh, impulses, those situations that we're creating? We, we are organizing those what we call happenings. Happenings are some kind of unguided tours in the city 
we give a meeting point, a day and a meeting point to people. Usually we, uh, even we use a certain protocol to decide this meeting point, which is we open the newspaper and we, we look for the first mention of the city in the newspaper and we just go there, which can be very, uh, lead us sometimes to a very remote place in the suburbs, but also sometimes just in the very, the most his touristic places. We ended up in Czech Port Chile, uh, last time we did it. So those happenings, uh, the people who are coming are tourists as well as uh, local people. We introduce them to the to the getting lost activity and they go by themselves when they're in the city and afterwards we meet uh, which is a very important part, part of the happening because this meeting is where people share their experience and um, share the experience and the, and the, 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 all the objects they've collected and their own idea of the getting lost this is the main um, tools we are using, a card game, uh, which uh, is designed to uh, compose surrealistic journeys in any context. So again, it subverts the codes of the tourism industry. It tells people where to go, what to do, and which souvenirs to bring back. Uh, we have certain rules so that people pick up a certain amount, number of cards and at the end keep three cards in the, hand, in the hands to um, to create their own journey. So for example, this one would be for the day, you follow your shadow, you cross the bridge and you bring back balance. Um, so uh, the, the players are then invited to uh, create their own journey and, and make their own interpretation of this kind of abstract um, situations. We also pre propose some uh, tailored workshops, hand-on workshops, uh, which uh, tackle the, all the aspects of the tourism industry. We, with the participants, we analyze the existing situation in, the, in, in a certain context, and we subvert the language of the, and the codes of the tourism industry to design and test new experiences for tourists. Uh, we create uh, unpredictable situation, we share them, we test them, and we initiate actions to raise awareness. The workshop results in the opening of an uh, alternative tourist information center, which uh, offer a critical view of the tourist, the, the tourist situation in a certain context, and uh, which offer the tourist with uh, alternative uh, alternative uh, um, guided tours in the city. So those situations we are created the, 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 and the hard games uh, get lost is uh, designed to replace any travel guide regardless of the destination in cities as well as in rural areas. Actually, it was uh, initially designing designed only to work in cities, but lately I have uh, uh, I mean, we have worked on it so that it could also work in rural areas. It is aimed as tourists, but also for locals wishing to take a fresh look on their own environment, uh, with family, friends, with strangers in the private or professional sphere. It uh, connects individual to create a journey as actually an artistic uh, piece. Uh, get lost is also interesting for cities which are concerned with managing mass tourism, uh, for companies or organizations, uh, for school, uh, art and architecture. It's actually a framework which invites people to uh, rethink the way they consume uh, or they relate to, to the environment and what they call destinations. So why actually we are doing this? Uh, first of all, it's, uh, I would say, always to, to have fun. I think that is the, the, the most, uh, the, the best, the, the main motivation. Uh, it's also to create a space uh, of uh, resistance, I would say, uh, laboratories of experimentations, to invite the public to rethink their the relation to, to the environment using the tone of derision 
these spaces hack the system uh, to to highlight the absurdity of the dominant model and call the public to emancipate itself from its status of uh, consumer um, in the in the tourism uh, in the tourism industry. So the final idea would be to we we collect all the experience of the of the participants and what what i would like to do now actually is to create a kind of alternative of trip advisor to uh as an archive of all those experiences to share with a wider public and uh maybe uh encourage people to think before they go on a cruise ship on the venice or uh, take the plane to 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 go on the other side of the planet. So here it is. This is the happy tourist experience. So I'd be happy to. Uh... Sorry, I'm trying now to come back. But, uh, thank you, Sir Ken and. Thank you. I, I have a little bit of trouble with my application because I closed the window, so I I, I don't see you anymore. We see we see a blue sky without any uh, clouds, but I'm sure that some of us will be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> early enough, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And now the big question seems to be for all of us: Are we tourists, or are we happy tourists? Exactly. Yeah. Does um, anybody has? Um, a comment, a feedback, uh, question for Suezic. Please feel free to uh, speak up or to write him in the chat. The chat is um, a little, the little square box in your right top of your screen, and you can as well write uh, your feedback or comments there if you want to share something. I have got a question. Uh, well, first of all, it was super interesting. Uh, yeah. But my question is, what kind of people come to the, um, as uh, in your tour as a happy tour? It's like, are, are people who understand that, like the reason you were saying now that like mass tourism, that they want to make a change or they're just curious and just like interested in knowing what kind of people take part? So um, we usually advertise the events uh, using uh, mostly Facebook. Um, and we, we've had uh, just normal tourists uh, who were in Berlin for like uh, only three days and who decided to come for one whole afternoon in nowhere in the suburb of Berlin. And I must say that was, a, that was a very re rewarding uh, to be able to divert them from, again, uh, Brandenburg or Tor or Czech or Charlie. And uh, it was really rewarding that they they loved it. They they had fun. They they really went into it and uh, appreciated the experience instead again uh, more than the destination. So we have I would say real tourists. Um, it's also there are also quite a lot of uh, people from the city uh, who are curious to discover the city with a different point of view, and uh, this also works quite well because um, people discover places they would usually never go to uh, and uh, and it's a uh, yeah it's a, it's a new way to discover the city and uh, so the the whole idea because we we imagine a lot of development so we were thinking of going to kidnap some tourists in the most touristic places and uh, and uh, <laughs> displace them if i can say uh, to other parts of the city, but uh, yeah, the idea it's it works for tourists, for uh, domestic tourists and international tourists, as well as local people. I have, I have a question as well. Uh, oh, no, no, go on. Oh yeah, thank. Uh, yeah, it was very, very, very interesting. Uh, thank you, thank you for the for the talk. So, so how did how does it work exactly? So you you, for instance, can I uh, try this out in Amsterdam uh, tomorrow, for instance, or is it something that has to be scheduled? 
So uh, for now, uh, it's not yet possible because uh, uh, we haven't um, we haven't um, spread. Oh, how do you say we haven't? Uh, uh, yeah, spread the, the this card game. At the end, th this card game can be could be used by anybody in any context. So once you have the card game, you can actually uh, redo this experience in uh, where, wherever you are, and it would work in Amsterdam as well as in uh, uh, London or or even also in the countryside. So what we now we we only have a prototype with again the the the. Um, the ambition to to uh, edit it and to uh, to 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 sell it more widely, but otherwise we um, we can also what we do now is we create events. So there is one thing: there is this event which is the happening where then we invite people to come and to experience. And again, afterwards, the possibility would be to to take this card game by yourself and do the experience by yourself. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's the way currently you are. Sort of yeah. promoting this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So then, my question is: uh, When is the next happening, and where do you document your previous happenings? Happy, excuse me, happenings. <laughs> so the next happenings uh, would be in January in Berlin. But maybe we also do very improvised happenings, so it might happen before that as a uh, I'm going to Greece very soon, and I think that will be a big, a big happenings. <laughs> uh, and we use the website to, uh, so we have the Instagram account, which is happy.tourists, where we uh, archive the, um, the, the, the the experience and the websites, happytourist.org. But all this now is it's 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 a bit. I've, it's a bit confusing because it's not such the right moment to, for me <laughs> to present the project because we are working on the website and it's uh, it, it's online but not with the, the this domain name. It's not happy.tourist. You have to go through my own website, swazik.gezenek, happy tourists. Uh, I think the the address is uh, was written in the in the presentation of the of the event. The whole domain name now is a bit is a bit uh, yeah I mean we're working on it in flux. It is a bit lost. Some would say exactly. <laughs> it is a, we, everything is a bit lost at the moment. It's a, we, it's a we website were, that thinks you know that. <laughs> we were <laughs> mostly active before Corona, where we had started to have a regular <laughs> program of happening, and uh, and it was going well and of course the whole corona situation stopped everything and uh, we have been a bit struggling to start to 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 restart uh, organizing the happening since then and as you might know berlin in winter is not neither the the best period for people to uh, i mean to gather people outside uh, but uh, yeah so the most of the experience i'm talking about happened before the corona, before the pandemic. Okay, um, maybe um, I can only plug something that um, um, is dear to my heart. Uh, if Soazik is uh, not aware of it, uh, uh, it will be useful for you too. But for Paul as well, if you're looking for a tool to help you to get lost in Amsterdam or anywhere else, uh, I can only recommend using Derive app, that is spelled Derive app, which is uh, also um, um, a dynamic. Uh, uh, Platform which you can contribute to, where uh, with cards similar to what Soazik is describing, to help you to get lost. Um, uh, I have another question, uh, Soazik. You mentioned that you are looking into or hoping to establish a kind of uh, alternative trip advisor uh, in connection to this. What is the practical progress, or uh, what's the what's the actual status of this this plan that you have for? An alternative trip advisor. It is. It is. Um, <clears throat> it is still uh, an hypothesis. How do you say hypothesis? Uh, it is still something. An idea. Is, a plan. Yeah. It is still a plan. Uh, want to focus on the card games before we uh, work on this. 
because this trip advisor would, would require to develop a whole uh, a whole application uh, a whole app uh, and right now we don't have the um, I mean we're still looking for the funding to do this kind of stuff yeah um, yeah this was indeed the, the direction where my question uh, yeah, yeah. was going to lead to uh, where do you get the funding from because this is not a, um, a trivial exercise no yeah. okay no no, no, no. Thanks. So we have we have done again we have done a prototype for an app, uh, but uh, yeah it's still at the stage of prototype. Before Thanks. we find it. And um, so is it, could you tell something more about this app? This is also a plan you have, or this is something yeah, still yeah. far far away. So right now the only the only uh, product I would say we have is this card games. The app, we, we were wondering whether we should deliver the, the, all those situations using an app, just like this Derive app. But uh, actually, I, I prefer the, the, the card games. I, I like the objects. I like this is something that you can put in your bag. And I also like that uh, not uh, digital. And uh, you can just have, you know, take these card games wherever you go and compose your own journey. Um, we wouldn't go, we, I don't think we will do the app to deliver the situations. But what's more important for me is how to archive the, 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 the situation and the experiences and how people can share. Uh, so this, if we go digital, that would be for mostly for that. Uh, you're using the word situation. Um, are you mm. referring to situationism or is this more like? Um... Yes, 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 clearly. Uh, I, actually, it is quite inspired by. Um, I started to develop this kind of protocols a very long time ago when I was traveling more than 20 years ago. The first time I think was when I went with my husband to Laos and uh, we arrived in Vientiane. We arrived in a restaurant. Uh, there was a family photo on the wall and we asked the owner where this was and for one month we, we decided to go there. So we actually skipped uh, one Prabang and all the beautiful things you probably can see in Laos. Uh, and we went in the mountains at the border with Vietnam for one month. So, and since then I've, start, I've developed always protocols like that when I was traveling to, to, to imagine new way to travel. But so I've discovered the situationist after that, <laughs> but uh, it is clearly inspired by the situationist uh, and the psychogeography uh, and how uh, when you let go of expectations, when you let you guide yourself by your instincts, uh, what kind of uh, pass it creates uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, in the city. Because the, what we do, those, those, those prompts, I would say, that we give to people, create situations. Um, it's, it's, it's all about, um, yeah, letting go and letting, it, it, it's like a derive, it's like, a, so it is, yes, it's quite similar to the situations, situationist. So for example, I um, I should have taken the card to show you um, some examples of uh, situations would be uh, where to go. I can tell people to go and uh, to to uh, look for the ho horizon and follow it, uh, and then uh, cross the bridge or climb a tree. Uh, change perspective and the combination of those whole situation create like a um, yeah, mission, a journey uh, make you start moving in the landscape and it's it's just a, it's an impulse uh, the, this is the idea, it's an impulse but what it also works I think what I've seen what's interesting is that when people are in groups it's also a very interesting way to uh, collectively exchange um, visions 
because uh, not, people don't interpret those prompts the same way. So it really brings different. Uh, it's it's a combination of the different um, people which create also something interesting. Uh, you can do it yourself, but it also creates a discussion. That's what. Um, and everybody comes with uh, his uh, own references and uh, uh, to create something very different every time. I mean, they, it, it's never the same. Uh, and it's very related also to the context where you are, obviously. But I have to think when you talk about that, about uh, Lucius Budkat and um, uh, his work he did in Kassel with the Spaziergang Wissenschaft. Actually, he was Swiss and lived in Kassel and at the Documenta in the early 1980s, he proposed a project uh, that um, invited people to make a journey to Tahiti by walking around in the landscape around uh, around Kassel. And that was actually his um, embryonic uh, walk, uh, the, the, the first uh, walk in his uh, long trajectory of what he up, uh, um, after developed as Spaziergang Wissenschaft, or in uh, English, the, the science of walking, and um, where he his his basic idea was that uh, by bringing people together and walking a place, uh, the, you provoke a discussion about the landscape, and you appropriate it in your mind. Uh, you walk you walk it in your mind, and by walking it in your mind and discussing it, uh, generating new ideas, you transform the landscape. Exactly. Um, um, and so um, um, and I also was thinking about that because actually we have another, um, uh, let's say, CEO from an, uh, an agency uh, with us, and that's uh, Marianne uh, Lerin uh, from Zurich. Uh, Marianne, it's uh, very happy to, to see you among us. I don't know if you are able to, to say something, if you are, um, uh, have your uh, microphone available, but if so, it would be nice to hear something about uh, your uh, approach to um, bringing people in the city walking you know, together. If you're not just listening in, which would be... Yeah. Hello, Maria. Hi, but I'm not really ready. But... <laughs> we are never ready. <laughs> That's the idea of a happy tourist, never to be ready. <laughs> No, I'm also uh, walking. Um, so my project's called Agency for Walking Culture, and um, in, I'm based in Zurich, in Switzerland. And I also invite people to come along on my walks. But um, yeah, that perhaps not so. Uh, um, normally, I, I, I. Um, in a way, I, I analyze, analyze the place before we go there, and then I, I give a certain small indication. Like sometimes we don't talk along the way; it depends on the situation, and uh, or we go, we walk much closer to the to the to everything, like the facades and so. So it's more about an embodied experience, often. And uh, but I like also this play, playful approach that you have um, with the cards, and yeah, that sounds uh, cool. Yeah, but it's all. I think it's it sounds pretty. Um, there, there seems to be similarity. It's all about the experience and uh, creating new ways to relate to your environment by walking close to the facades. You have a new perspective. You have a different perspective on the on what surrounds you or but do you do you is it different in every places where you go? Is it related? Is it really contextualized? Yeah, it's normally uh, um, it's the, the concept comes out of the of the of the context. Yeah, so sometimes it's really important to to walk in a special way in this place so that you can experience something that you wouldn't experience, and uh, it's also normally. Um, we, if we if we don't talk, we do it really for some time. So we, we're, we're we're walking for an hour without talking in a special way, and then it's really a different experience of the place. Mm -hmm. But mostly, it's not. It's really a small thing that I'm changing. So if you don't talk, it's already a huge, uh, it's a small change, but it's a huge change in the experience. Mm -hmm. 
and then but mostly after the walk we also discuss about the experiences we had and and how we changed also the body perception if we, if we walk in a special way or if we walk backwards or whatever we did in this special place then. I've noticed that uh, people actually really um, react very well when uh, when we give them some uh, indications we are which are open to interpretations so it's not about uh, again it's not about guiding them into something uh, but it's it's opening up and uh, encouraging them to really perform the space actually instead of uh, just uh, going through and um, and this become very playful and creative and uh, uh, there was a group who uh, came back with a whole scenario of a movie they were completely ready <laughs> to the movie with only three small prompts they had traveled through the mediterranean sea they had found reference in their own culture in the greek culture and the and uh, and for me it, yeah it was great to see them coming so enthusiastic about the the where those three little sentences uh, allow them to create and in a, in a particular landscape also because it's all linked to the to the landscape but uh yeah i think the the, the more it's open the 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 better it works i've i've noticed yeah i can imagine if you give the the people the possibility to really make their decisions and and uh, observe what they want and in a way that they that they uh, yeah, that they are um, inspired by this prompts is cool, you know. Uh, I have a question uh, for both uh, Marion and Sozik. Um, both the things that you are describing, the happenings, happenings, and the walks in Zurich, are very incidental. Uh, they're like singular events, right? That uh, nudge people into experiencing their environment uh, in a way that is uh, different from how they otherwise would, uh, specifically through otherwise uh, tools like TripAdvisor uh, or Google Maps or whatnot, uh, Lonely Planets. Um, but what you are lacking with that is a, a struggle or a, a way to fight against the huge scale of these platforms. Uh, you, you, you can't beat them <laughs> because they're too big and they grow too fast. Um, so how would you be, how would you see, or how could you see being able to counter these platforms with your methods? How can you reach more people faster in nudging them to change the way they see the world? <laughs> well, as, as you say, it's, a. Uh... So what I've done already with happy owners was really uh, to, I, I talk about hacking because it's really about uh, using the same language as the tourist industry, but subverting it in a, in a, in a more uh, yeah, provocative and uh, but artistic way. Um, but of course it needs uh means also it needs uh, in its resources to be able to create something which uh, uh, which is strong enough to uh, influence and to, 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 to fight those big platforms. Um, but now there are some um, using some hashtag or using some we can hope to create a, a trend you know, by uh, using social medias, uh, if people are uh, proud enough and happy enough to take part in this kind of experience and want to share them, then uh, we can hope uh, that it, it, it piles up, you would say, or it creates, it becomes uh, bigger. But of course... Snowballs. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, of course, it requires resources that and uh, that that we don't have now. But I, I I just yeah the snowball effects. Let's let's say let's let's believe in the snowball effect. <laughs> yeah, I would say my my projects don't uh, 
don't go against uh, these big things because it's. I think it's if the experience you can make with walking with me. It's a lot about presence and concentration, but really uh, experiencing an, a place differently than you would normally with all these um, advices and things. So I think it's. Uh, I, I just reach the people that are interesting in in. in Kind of, of uh, experience, but actually, the the, um, the 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 fact that we are again uh, making a parody of a tourist agency allows us to reach uh, tourists and also the authorities which are uh, managing uh, tourism in the in the cities. Um, I've presented the project to. Uh, uh, tourist uh, official, I mean official people from Berlin who are working in the tourism industry, uh, and to people in uh, in Amsterdam, and and this is the idea also to try to sell this kind of very strange experience to people who are who are actually in charge of managing the tourists in the city, and they um, people are interested if I tell them, listen, uh, I I have an experience which will allow you to invite people to explore uh, a very uh, unknown suburb of the city instead of having them in the city centre. And of course it's just one experience, but uh, uh, this is the idea to, to, to also try to uh, convince people who are managing, who are dealing with tourism in cities to uh, experience this kind of uh, situations with their, their, their own public. Do you have any interest in the, in the spiritual side of the of the whole thing? Is that you haven't mentioned anything about that? But the spiritual me, side of the what 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 do you what, what, what do I you, mean? Well, that's yeah. why that's why I travel. Is uh, I don't know. I don't think you get it in a church. Maybe sort of visiting churches in different cities. That's part of the motivation as a of the tourists, and which isn't much to do with it. But, you know, you get the sort of experiences in walking in the landscape or those sort of, ex they're sort of peak experiences, I suppose, in a way. So, it just seems that you're you're talking about something, well, not really materialistic, but playing cards and all that kind of stuff. Is there a dimension of the, the sort of uncontrolled side of it? The, the, well, that's the only word I can think for it is spiritual, because it, it's something bigger than us, sort of um, allowing it to come in somehow, not not making it about money or not making it about plans or about all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, because I think the whole, uh, the, the whole situations are to encourage people to uh, connect uh, with the environment and the elements and the sky and the, and the light and the you know, to 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 uh, uh, so everybody does this in a different way, but quite a lot of situations I think uh, um, go into this direction. If I tell people to, uh, um, I'm trying to remember the situations, but uh, they are encouraging people to connect to the environment, which is, for me is something spiritual. Uh, take time, to take the time, to not rush, to let go of expectation. And this is about uh, looking at things in a different way and again connect. So for me, this is the spiritual part. It's about encouraging people not to consume the location, but really to uh, to connect with it. And with the sort of coming into the now, into the, the, the living in the moment sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, as uh, some of you may know, I was um, part of an, of an initiative in the end of the, uh, let's say, the first decade of the 2000s, beginning um, of the 2010s, which was called No Tours. And uh, it was um, an initiative of a collective of Spanish um, uh, artists and and me living then very close to the Spanish border uh, in, uh, near to Galicia. 
And um, we came up uh, among others, so we were uh, horrified by, by the audio guides uh, as they exist, as they came up then, because they were so, and they still are, uh, linear. They bring you to A, B, C, they give you a discourse that is decided from above, you cannot change it, uh, there's no uh, any human element in it. And um, we wanted to, we uh, um, developed an, a tool, actually also an, an app that allowed you to make your own um, in group, or your own um, audio guides uh, that um, uh, was were meant to get lost in the city, um, uh, in the sense that to approach the city on an, and get lost in the in the sense of a non-linear way of um, um, moving around in the city and an intuitive way uh, to um, uh, approach the city. So to use the senses as a whole, uh, there's a, not to use only the, the for us the, this, this digital tool was not about uh, the, uh, the tool in itself, the technology in itself, but it was about a sort of extension of your whole body and to, um, uh, to, to really be connected with what is around you and with others. And putting in an element of chance, a chance of unpredictability. And, uh, and that, that's of course in your, um, um, let's say, um, uh, your area, um, there's a Bob, uh, the unpredictability, the, the chance, the, uh, how, um, um, how this creates possibilities uh, and, and situations that cannot be known in advance and get you in a situation of, of, of almost uncertainty, of, of letting go. And, and this is a spiritual experience. Um, I'm not mm. putting it in a religious sense. I'm putting it in just no. in, a, in, in a state of being, of being um, being lost in, in a sense of, of open for everything that can happen. And uh, uh, with people around you, I think that the magic of this is what, what you, you did, uh, Suazik, and, and what you do um, as well, Marianne, is that it is always in group with others and that the magic happens in with the people together, uh, being in a situation that is out of the ordinary. Uh, and um, so um, maybe their magic spirituality uh, emerges uh, spontaneously. Um, because mm. getting lost, uh, it, it, it sort of brings up the idea of um, losing yourself and um, losing touch with any sort of rules or anything like that. Just um, completely, um, we're just, <laughs> I don't know, just um, without, without preconceived ideas and all that kind of stuff, without anything really. I mean, it's how do you set the mechanism of getting lost is 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 the starting point basically and is there any i'd be more interested in framing ideas within the process of actually having got lost how 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 could you then <laughs> create something within that rather than how to get lost because there must be structures inside the process of getting um how do you um what do you look for to find yourself and um do you do you look for recognizable um buildings or what what do you do to uh, do you try to get unlost or do you um try to um get into some sort of psychotic state of of worry and fear do you want to explore all these sort of realms that can 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 happen as a consequence of of getting lost. It, this is this, this is like the fun side of it for me. Anyway. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> now. Yeah, it's a, get lost. Yeah, <laughs> give up control. Give up the uh, idea of of, of anything. Um, no, but for me, it's 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 more about um, uh, again um, this whole idea of getting lost it's more about letting go of expectations because now we all we always have goals uh, it's very difficult not to have goals you know to say i go there i i want to see this i um, and allowing yourself to just wander without a goal and to um yeah, it's it's really it's really difficult to get to really get lost. Actually, it it is very uh, very difficult. I I don't know if you. It's for me. It's more about forgetting uh, what led you there. Also, it's a for, forgetting. Uh, it's again being present because. Uh, uh, 
with, with again with no goals no expectations no uh, I don't know if that's, that answers at all. <laughs> you, you yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the fun. Or, you know, any time I've ever travelled or hitchhiked, there's always been things that I haven't planned that have just, it's a, you can't plan these things. That they just exactly. happen, really. Yeah. And I, I, suppose it, I suppose what it's got to do with is making yourself vulnerable. It does, it does. Yeah. Just giving up control to see what, what happens is, is a bit of a, of a fun thing to do. Uh, I don't I, know quite what the control is, but <laughs> yeah, it's really about losing control, allowing to lose control. Just to see what happens when when you do sort of thing. <laughs> uh, Babak, I don't know if you are still with us or if you are in the meantime already on a. On the plane, and uh, yeah, yeah. How, how how do you get people get lost uh, to get lost? Uh, so that maybe um, uh, requires uh, prefacing this with saying that I developed uh, the Reveb. Um, so how do I? Uh, and also um, with the Reveb, I think I am able to scale it up a little bit because it doesn't require me to help people to get lost. Uh, they can use the tool, and then they can do it themselves. Um, but how do I get them uh, lost with this tool? Well, it's a collaborative platform, first of all. So I'm not the only one who is making these tasks, right? Anyone who participates makes them, can make them. Um, but as uh, Swazik was saying, the ones, that, the tasks that work best are the ones that, that are open-ended, because they question, uh, they they put a question to the to the user, to the traveler, to the tourist, um, and with that they question their environment, uh, and with that they look at their environment differently. Uh, and and well, depending on the task or depending on the person, uh, uh, they might uh, see different things that they otherwise would not. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they get lost, but they do definitely um, look at their environment in a different way. Um, um, yeah, that I think is the crux, really. Another thing, though, or two other things maybe that also um, uh, play a part is that uh, the Rivap. Um, uh, requires the the user to take a step back uh, as in what one reason why I do not like physical cards is when you have a stack of physical cards uh, as a as a user as a tourist uh, if you don't like a card you just go to the next one until you find one that you like so actually a physical deck gives you as a as a tourist a lot of control over what you are going to do next and it's exactly that control that you want to counter a little bit with this kind of approach. So what we do with the um is, uh, and actually the beginning of next year, there's going to be a, an up, a seriously updated version, which is going to implement this more, where uh, you can't just skip to the next card. You have to wait. <clears throat> so you might as well do the task because you're not going to be able to get another task until time runs out. Um, and that, um, I think, um, pushes the creative buttons with the user as well, uh, because he's stuck. He has to, you know, just, well, or he can just ignore it completely. But for those that stick around, um, uh, it means that they have to come up with a creative way to approach the task that is presented to them. Um, yeah, so that, I think, answers that question. What about giving up language? Blah, 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 blah. Start no, not, just yeah. talking in nonsense language. That would be a way of losing control, surely. We also do some blurred maps, for example, like maps which you actually cannot read, but you have to imagine. But uh, Babak, to, to answer to, to what you were saying about the cards, I, I completely agree with you that uh, it's easy to skip the card and to go to another one. But we have actually um, imagined a rule uh, which uh, I think avoid this because we don't tell people to. So we have those three categories, where to go, what to do and which souvenir to bring back. But we, instead of telling people take one card in, in each category, we tell them to take three cards in each category. So they have nine cards and using those nine cards, we ask them to um, to create the, 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 the composition that they like the best. 
and they will only keep three cards. So the first creative yeah. uh, task is to uh, interpret those cards and to derive and to see what goes well with, uh, you know, which task goes well, which uh, which uh, which are the tasks. And it really creates yeah. like a surrealist, a surrealist yeah. puzzle in a way. Uh, yeah. So this avoids this, uh, you know, skipping cards because I don't like it. It usually yeah. using this rule, people always find. Sorry. I mean, airport. There's an announcement. Oh, airport, airport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, usually people always find a combination with which uh, they like, and it's also a creative moment. So it works like that. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Uh, so you're facilitating a kind of curation on behalf for the 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 tourist. Um, you allow a certain curation on behalf of the no, not on behalf. The tourist is given the power to create curate their own experience. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then uh, with nine cards, they have that flexibility to pick out um, a journey or to design a journey that works for them or for their group. That's really exactly. nice. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, and then on uh, on blurred maps, uh, what also might be not well, this of course goes back to um, this, I forget who it was, but one of the situationists uh, traveled in Germany and he took a map of the, the London metro with him and he said that he used, it, used the, the map of the London metro to navigate through uh, the part of Germany where he was, the Schwarzwald or something. Um, uh, and, you know, it's funny and, it, and it's, a, it's a favorite with, uh, with uh, those who subscribe to situationism. I'm quite skeptical of this. I try it with another app that exactly allowed you to do this, uh, where you would use the map of one city, any city, to navigate uh, uh, another city, any city. And, you know, it's comical, but it, it really, it's pointless. There, it's, it brings no insights. Um, but blurring maps, uh, I do uh, appreciate. Uh, and on that level, uh, or, or with that thought, one of the things I also did in another application was, uh, which was, which allowed you to explore uh, the old port of Rio de Janeiro, um, and it had a map, but the map was a hand-drawn map of what the Rio de Janeiro was like in, in 18, 1857, I think. No, that doesn't make sense. 1823, maybe. Um, so it's similar, but not the same. Uh, and also the map was not scrollable. So you only could see where you were uh, within, a, within a radius of maybe 150 meters. Um, so if you wanted to go, if you wanted to discover something, like an arrow would point you to a site that you could see off the map, uh, of the part of the map that you could see, um, but then you you had to guess as to what the best route to get there was, because you couldn't see what the path was to that place. You could only see the street directly next to you. So this would give you some information, but limited information that required uh, creativity or the, or the input of um, um, of the the user, uh, and uh, through that also um, um, a kind of uh, or facilitated discovery uh, because it required creativity. Uh, it's not exactly spiritual, but it it does require inputs on a different level uh, from the user. And I do think Rob Bob that goes a little bit back to what um, the travel used to be like before we had all these tools at our disposal that create a, like a perfect transparency uh, of our environment at home and when we travel. We have perfect information at our fingertips. And by taking away this perfect information and providing limited information or even incorrect information mm. uh, can result in a, a, an experience that can lift us to a different level um, because it requires us to think about our environment in a different way. We are agents suddenly, as opposed to um, agents of our own experience, as opposed to um, uh, being being led by the tools that we um, um, that we deploy to have a to to and that's the paradox of this to have a unique experience. <laughs> we use these tools. We, 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 we want to use this experience. We could use the situation with us. What eight or nine people here together? Stop using language. Just see um, what happens then. We could lose control, not by going out, but the, the, the immediacy of the television screen. Just give up that control to see what happens. I mean, once you could do yeah. it there, live, like now in this particular moment, then you can apply that to outside, I suppose. Oh. 
Uh, well, before yeah. we do that, I want to just sort of... Uh, yeah, let it go. <laughs> yeah I, I wondered if I could pitch in, because um, a couple of things that come to mind is that um, in the 1980s, when uh, package holidays were uh, kind of uh, much more um, the thing, I think, in the UK, there were a lot of opportunities to buy package holidays. Uh, we used to play a game, which was we would uh, put five uh, package holidays in a hat and uh, pull them out <laughs> uh, blindfold and just go on that package holiday without anything apart from all you were allowed to travel with uh, was the clothes that you were stood up in and your passport. And uh, we did that about half a dozen times. So I went to all sorts of different places. I had no idea where I was going until I sort of arrived at the airport. You know, it was kind of a bizarre sort of uh, thing to do. Um, then more recently, I got slightly muddled because um, I, I bought a holiday or I arranged to go on a holiday um, because I was buying it on the internet uh, to a place which I, I thought was in Mallorca, but it turned out to be in the Canary Isles. So uh, I, we actually flew to the Canaries instead of um, uh, Mallorca, which was slightly confusing to put it mildly. And uh, since then, I've always been slightly worried about my ability to uh, book holidays on the internet. Um, but uh, but in the 90s, there was a, a huge drive by the environmental um, uh, you know sector, if you call them that, the eco uh, around not eco tourism, but around uh, um, trying to combat uh, major uh, tourism in the UK, and uh, and that was called tourism concern. And tu tourism concern still exists now. It's a very huge, big uh, outfit now uh, fighting tourism across the world, uh, uh, and uh, and its impact on the environment and on we ourselves as consumers. So. Um, uh, I did a piece of work for them in the late 1990s, uh, which was about uh, looking at how we could get people to uh, uh, to go to places, but to uh, look uh, beyond what were in the tourist guides. So to go off the beaten track, and and that developed further. So that when uh, I did a piece of work for the Scottish Tourism Board, which I thought was quite hilarious actually working with them, uh, but I, I actually wrote a guide to how to survive off the beaten track uh, in Scotland, which was hilarious because pretty much nowhere in Scotland, well, you know, unless you're in unseasonable weather um, in the Highlands, you might get uh, very badly lost, but pretty much, you know, anywhere in uh, the central belt of Scotland, it's impossible to get lost. But that's what we were kind of doing, and I was being commissioned to, to write those kinds of guides. I also wrote a guide uh, which was uh, around how you could enjoy motorway service stations, which is hard to believe that anyone would uh, actually want to commission that and get that published. But uh, that's one of the things we did, which was exploring what you could discover when you were forced to be on the track um, of the motorway, and then uh, what you could discover once you became uh, enmeshed in this uh, rather bizarre space, which is called the motorway service station. So um, I have to say that my sort of experiences of trying to get people lost have actually been a commissioned work uh, where I've asked, been asked to um, um, lose people, but they have to follow a guidebook to be lost, if that makes sense. Um, and, and I know a lot of you have been, or a lot of the discussion so far has been sort of just getting lost in mind, body, and spirit, as well as being in a particular place. Um, but I think I, I can follow what sort of what's been going on. But God help me when I book the next holiday. That's all I can say is I'm sure I'm going to get it all wrong. Um, and um, uh, and thank you very much for for a really enlightening talk. Actually, I thought what you presented was really uh, a, a huge amount of work. Um, really good, fantastic to see that, and also to see. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but I really want to know more about happy owners. Is, is there anything? <laughs> like, uh, I, I, you know, the um, real estate business is so huge in the UK. Anything to disrupt that would be fantastic. Um, the amount of development that goes on in the UK, especially in London, um, mm. which is not developed for people to live in, it's developed as um, what we call safety boxes in the sky. 
um, <laughs> so, sorry, security boxes in the sky. Um, y you know, it, it's purely uh, development for um, overseas investors, not for any other reason. Um, mm. So, yeah, I've, if there's any link to happy owners, I'd like to go there and have a look. But thanks so much. And forgive me, I've got to duck out and cook dinner. Um, <laughs> so, Thank um, you. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you very much. And yeah, you can you can have some information about the happy owners also on my website, Swazi Kizanek. There is one part of the website which is all about happy owners. And uh, yeah, you, you it it's it was also a very big project with uh, uh, with maybe one of the most uh, interesting parties when I did the presentation of these happy owners things to a, a real estate. Uh, students of real estate school and I was presenting them with my crazy projects uh, them not knowing that it was an artistic project so that was a performance in itself <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. next Great. time happy owners for next time <laughs> nice, nice but, to see you from Zurich so hi <laughs> bye, bye, -bye. I'm sure we all did it. I'm sorry, uh, just shut me off if you. But uh, in '65, I with 50 pounds, I hitchhiked round Europe when I left school, and I came back with 20 pounds, and I I didn't <laughs> you know sleep out rough any of the time, and just went right through you know down the Rhine, Yugoslavia, Italy, the whole the whole. It was a real adventure, and it, it was yeah. like what Babak was talking about. Without that technology, you just. I started out with me and Alan Carter started out with great big rucksacks, and we were hitchhiking. We didn't get all there for eight hours, so we ended up getting a train to Aachen, and then we dumped our, our, our big rucksacks, and we just had a little duffel bag with a toothbrush and a towel, and that's how we. And then we said goodbye to each other. We just set out into this great nothingness, and it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. I, I did this also before the whole internet thing in uh, in Africa for one year. We've crossed with my husband from north to south, only using public transport and not knowing the, with this huge freedom to stay wherever we wanted to stay as long as we were feeling good and not no plans, no no. Uh, and as you say, we 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 left with to to have everything you need for one year in a backpack is a very. Uh, um, learning experience you realize that you don't need so much actually don't need anything <laughs> that's the beauty okay. about traveling and about uh, walking actually you don't consume anything you don't need anything still to do something uh, how ironically mm -hmm. it may, may sound Let, um, let's see uh, what will happen in two weeks Gert. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> if I see the temperatures, um, then <laughs> I'll um, yeah, yeah, then, no. Um, uh, Rob, Bob, um, uh, so as I, um, um, uh, me and a group of other artists, uh, including Yanis um, and uh, Jess, Jess Hastings, who are often here with us as well, and and, and, and other uh, wonderful people, will uh, walk a mountain. Uh, <laughs> and um, it will be like minus degrees, and we will stay outdoors for as long we can, um, which will be uh, some days, uh, without any real plan, um, uh, except of being together and sharing this uh, uh, walk with each other. Uh, so that's um, our next uh, attempt to be a happy the, tourist. <laughs> maybe building an igloo. Igloo? Uh, that uh, I would be <laughs> lovely to have. I'm already, I feel myself like an ice beer. <laughs> it seems that we came to the end of this conversation. That doesn't want to say that we have to leave immediately, but uh, that uh, people okay. uh, had, the, 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 had to rush off to. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for having me tonight. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was nice talking to you all. I you. also. <laughs> Very nice inputs. Mm -hmm. So, see you all soon, um, Bob, Babak, um, Jurassic, um, and bye -bye. all the others. Uh, bye bye. Good evening. Mm -hmm.